Now, the rest of the story. Julia Elizabeth Wells grew up with war. She was not yet four when her homeland got into the fighting. A year later, Hitler began hurling bombs at London. Little Liz was living with her mother and stepfather in one of the worst of that city's slums. When her parents began earning more money, they all moved a step up to Beckenham, and they were happy there. The Nazi bombing had even begun to taper off. But then, in 1944, when little Liz was eight, a new threat zoomed out of the southern sky. Doodle bugs, uh, the British called them, pilotless aircraft carrying heavy explosives, and about the time they reached southeast England, they ran out of gas and spun in and blew up. The British countered with every defensive measure they could think of. Fighters, anti-aircraft guns, barrage balloons, and of course bombing the German launching sites, and still the dreadful doodle bugs uh, took their toll. Air raid shelters were everywhere, and the community of Beckenham was no different. Little Liz, bedecked with whistle and opera glasses, was the appointed neighborhood lookout. She took her job seriously. For some reason, folks in Beckenham didn't pay much attention to the official air raid warnings, but they listened to Liz. The explosions could be nerve-shattering. The challenge was to stay calm. But how? Well, one night when the bombs were falling, Liz's stepdad raised his rich tenor voice to lead a community sing. Everyone sang, including little Liz, especially little Liz. In fact, the eight-year young girl sang with such gusto and spanning such an incredible range of pitch that one by one the others in the shelter stopped singing to listen and they listened in awe. One might imagine a child of her age singing an octave above the grown-ups. Not Liz. Oh, my goodness. She sang as high as two octaves higher than the others, and so forcefully that Hitler's hardware sounded puny by comparison. Innumerable nights, little Liz cheered her Beckenham neighbors, mesmerizing them with what seemed her superhuman voice. It wasn't long before her amazed mother took the child to a throat specialist for an examination. The specialist agreed the little girl's voice was, quote, as developed as that of an adult, provided the adult could sing through four octaves uh, with the power of a hurricane. And so began a career that the world will not ever forget. Oh... It led that little girl to London's Hippodrome and to Manhattan's Broadway and to Hollywood stardom. But it all started in an air raid shelter in Beckenham. Little Liz was their blessing first and ours ever since. Little Julia Elizabeth Wells, who later took her stepfather's name. And by the way, his name was Ted Andrews. Oh, yes. You know his stepdaughter as Julie Andrew. Now you know the rest of the story. And now the rest of the rest of the story. Like most children of my generation and perhaps those of the generation before, I was enamored when I saw Julie Andrews and Mary Poppins. There was just something about her as that character that made me feel comfortable, happy, relaxed. I knew that as long as she was on the screen, everything was going to be okay. And I still get that feeling each time I watch Mary Poppins. It's one of my favorites. In 2008, Julie Andrews published Home, a memoir of my early years. If you're a fan, I highly recommend this book. It's wonderful. In this episode, Mr. Harvey explained that Julie's family learned of her impressive singing ability while in an air raid shelter. For some reason, Julie failed to include this in her memoir. Barbara Morris and Ted Williams married on December the 26th, 1932. Ted was a talented carpenter and worked from one job site to another. During the Great Depression, new construction ground to a halt and Ted struggled to find work. 
1932, he became a school teacher. His wife, Barbara, brought in extra money for the family by giving piano lessons and playing for local crowds. In early 1935, Barbara told Ted that she was pregnant. And on October the 1st, 1935, Julia Elizabeth Julie Wells was born. Two years later, they had a son they named Johnny. Soon thereafter, the marriage fell apart. In 1940, Barbara, still legally married to Ted Williams, began a relationship with another man also named Ted. Johnny lived with Ted Wells and Julie lived with Barbara and Uncle Ted. In November 1943, Julie's parents divorced and Barbara immediately married the other Ted. Following the ceremony, Barbara instructed Julie that rather than calling her stepfather Uncle Ted, she was to call him Pop, which Julie despised. The title Dad was reserved for Ted Wells. Barbara was a talented piano player and Pop was a vaudeville performer. Soon after they met, Barbara and Pop joined forces and performed in vaudeville shows together. Barbara took every opportunity to display her talent when she held or attended parties. Sometimes Julie attended parties with her mother and, on many occasions, Barbara convinced Julie to sing for the guests. The guests enjoyed the impromptu performances, but Julie was always reluctant because she felt her mother was using her to get attention. One night in the autumn of 1950, Barbara and Julie were driving to yet another party. As they neared the home, Barbara turned to Julie and asked, I want you to do me a favor. If I ask you to sing, will you do it? Now this was out of character for Barbara. She usually asked Julie in front of the guests knowing she would be unable to refuse. Julie reluctantly agreed to sing. During the party, Barbara played piano and Julie sang a single song. The guests were delighted. After their performance, guests complimented Barbara and Julie. One man seemed genuinely interested in Julie. She recognized the man immediately. He had been a visitor in their home on several occasions when Julie was much younger than her current 15 years of age. As the party progressed, Barbara had one stiff drink after another. The man Julie recognized from so long ago sat down on the couch beside her. Within minutes of their meeting, Julie felt an electricity between them that she couldn't explain. That was a direct quote from her book. Rather than making small talk, the man asked her specific questions about school, about singing, about life in general. By the time the party was over, Barbara was too intoxicated to drive. Julie, not yet old enough to operate a vehicle legally, had no choice but to drive herself and her mother home. Barbara reassured Julie in slurred speech that she would show her the way home. As they drove through the thick fog, Barbara asked Julie if she knew why they attended the party and why she asked Julie to sing. Julie replied that she did not and kept her focus on the road. Barbara asked Julie what she thought about the man who sat beside her on the couch. He seemed pleasant, Julie replied. With hesitation and tears in her eyes, Barbara explained why she had taken Julie to the party and had her sing. That man is your father. Barbara explained that she'd wanted to tell Julie this secret for 14 years. Tears streamed from Barbara's eyes. Although confused, somewhat angry, and in shock, Julie remained calm and focused on the road. Barbara explained that there had been an overwhelming attraction that she just couldn't deny, and she had a one-night stand with that man. Julie drove the car into the driveway, turned the engine off. She and her mother sat in awkward silence, neither knowing what to say. Julie was stunned by her mother's revelation, and Barbara seemed embarrassed. Without another word, Barbara hurried from the car to sleep off her intoxication. Barbara avoided any discussion about the topic with Julie for several days. Finally, Julie brought up the subject. Julie asked her mother how she could be sure that the man at the party was her father. Barbara replied, because Daddy and I weren't being romantic in those days. Julie and her mother never spoke about the subject again. Nearly 40 years later, 
Long after Barbara had died, Julie spoke to her Aunt Joan about the man she had met at the party. She asked if what her mother had told her so many years ago was true. Aunt Joan reluctantly told her that it was. The man at the party was, in fact, her biological father. During their conversation, Julie asked Aunt Joan a question she had wanted to ask her mother, but never did. She wanted to know if the man she knew as dad knew. Aunt Joan simply replied, yes, he did. Julie was almost as stunned as the night she learned who her real father was. Aunt Joan explained that Dad was so in love with Barbara that he overlooked the affair and the fact that Julie was not his. He had raised Julie as his own. Julie did not reveal the name of her biological father in the book. Back in the early 1950s, Julie joined Barbara's and Pop's act. For a while, she only performed a song or two. Pop wanted the spotlight for himself. Pretty soon, her talents outshone those of Barbara and Pop. Julie got offers to perform without Barbara and Pop, whose careers had stalled completely. Julie's career, however, soared. She performed with orchestras in Broadway and West End productions on various television shows and in movies. It had been Julie's stepfather who insisted that Julie legally change her last name to his, Andrews. But I wonder if Julie's stepfather insisted on the name change to feed his own ego. No one remembers Ted Andrews, but the world knows Julie Andrews from her films such as Victor Victoria, The Princess Diaries, The Sound of Music, Mary Poppins, and many, many more. In 1949, a year before she learned the truth about her biological father, Julie Andrews provided the voice for the princess in the English version of the Italian animated film La Rosa de Baghdad. The English version was called The Singing Princess. This was her first work in film. Next, she worked on three projects filmed for television. But then in 1963, she was cast as the lead in Mary Poppins. When the film was released in 1964, Julie Andrews became a household name. Julie Andrews has appeared in over 50 productions as an actress. She's currently doing voiceover work for the character Lady Whistledown for the TV series Bridgerton. I wonder what she'll do next. Do you have a favorite Julie Andrews film? I'm Brad Dyson. Thanks for watching. And now you know the rest of the rest of the story.